Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the Bresso Oscillator. In this part we will start with an overview that will outline the overall architecture and concepts. Then we will dive deep into the frequency modulation sections. In the next videos we will cover the other features. Let's begin. In every brain cell there are two analog triangle core oscillators, each with four separate waveform outputs. The brain cell fits within the tradition of complex oscillators pioneered by Don Buchla in the 70s. Even if this is not a scientific term, we usually call complex a waveform that is not part of the classic assigned so triangle square and pulse waves. We generally achieve it through audio rate modulation. Here is why complex waveform generators typically have two oscillators, so that we can modulate each other and achieve complex results. The Brainso has three main ways of modulating the two oscillators and generating complex waveforms, frequency, amplitude and timber modulation. These different techniques belong to specific interface sections and have unique symbols, positions and colors. For this reason, an excellent way to approach the Brainso oscillator is through color and spatial distribution. In this section we have everything related to frequency, from the volt productive inputs to the true zero frequency modulation controls. Since the two oscillators can be completely independent, the frequency section has two colors, green and yellow, one per each. We can see that such colors are the same on many outputs here. These are the different waveforms available for the green and yellow oscillators, respectively. We can hear the result of the frequency modulations that we set up in this section through any of these outputs. These outputs here, however, have different colors, white and red. They belong to the same yellow oscillator, but they introduce two more modulations, timber white and amplitude red. The timber section is on this side of the brain zone and uses two wave shapers and a wave folder to alter the yellow triangle waveform. Then the timber output goes through a four quadrant multiplier that can perform amplitude or ring modulation. This is the red section and this knob here defines the balance between the timber output and its amplitude modulated copy. The blend of the white and red sections comes out of the final output. Every frequency modulation set up in the yellow section will also be present in the sound we hear from the white and red outputs. This switch here allows us to select the square wave output. The yellow one is straight from the oscillator score and the white one comes from this wave shaper here. To perform any of these modulations, green, yellow, white or red, we need two signals, which we will call carrier and modulator. The carrier oscillator is the one whose output we are actually hearing, while the modulator can be any signal, but by default is the other oscillator. For example, if we listen to any of the green oscillator's outputs, it will be our carrier, and we can use the yellow one as a modulator, and vice versa. To figure out the many ways we can use an oscillator as a modulator, we need to follow the dashed lines. They stand for semi-normalization and they connect an input to an output. For example, we can see that the green sine wave output has dashed lines around it. It means that it can be a modulator without the need to patch a single cable. Let's see where we can find some green dashed lines. Here, for instance, or here. This means that these are all potential modulation targets. We can patch any signal to these inputs and engage their modulation, but the sine wave is routed to them by default. The last thing that may help us understanding Brinsos interface is the straight and dotted lines. A straight line connects and sums two parts of the circuits, like an input to an output or two CVs summed together. A dotted line stands for CV, so whenever we see a dotted line departing from a jack socket, we can tell that the signal we patch to it will control some parameters. This was our introduction. Now we will move on to the frequency section. As we said, the yellow and green sections contain several waveform outputs and all the possible ways we can control and modulate our oscillator's frequencies. Let's patch any of the yellow outputs to the CGM and hear some sounds. Any output will do, since the frequency control will affect all of them in the same way. First, we can change the frequency through the tuning knobs here. This one spans over roughly 7 octaves, while the fine-tuned knobs add or subtract roughly one semitone for more precise tuning. Please note that the coarse frequency knob range is not the complete oscillator's range. We need to keep some extra space for the other control voltages that may change our oscillator frequencies. Once we have tuned the brain cell oscillators, we can lock their coarse frequencies through these buttons here. Now the knob will no longer change the frequency, so we can start our performance safely. At any time, we can always tweak the fine-tune knob to correct the brain source intonation on the fly. 
Then we can patch any valve productive signal to this input to change Brinsos frequency by discrete intervals corresponding to the western semitones. Finally, we can use the two frequency modulation circuits. Frequency modulation, or FM, is a technique that uses one signal to modulate another signal's frequency at audio rate and generate a third signal. The first two signals, called modulator and carrier, are usually quite simple waveforms, such as the sine wave, while the third one is way richer in harmonics and overtones. Brainsaw circuits perform exponential and through zero linear FM, respectively. We will do a separate video on these two techniques, but for now we will just say that the same signal patched to any of these two will provide different results. The exponential FM creates metallic sounds that cannot retain any tuning information, while the true zero linear FM creates crystalline sounds that are richer in overtones and can easily track the volt per octave controls. We can use any signal as a modulator in our FM patches, but by default we can see that these inputs are semi-normaled. If we don't patch anything, the green sine wave will be our modulator if we choose the yellow oscillator as a carrier. Through these knobs we can attenuate the incoming signals on both the FM circuits at the same time. Then we can use this knob to define the FM deviation amount, which is how much modulation we want to introduce in the oscillator circuit. You may have noticed that we said FM deviation instead of the more common index. That's a peculiar feature of the Brainsos FM circuit design and we will talk more in detail about it in another video. For now we can say that both deviation and index are ways to control the modulation amount, but working with the deviation allows us to have a crisp bass sounds and smoother high pitch synth leads without the need to adjust the control. Everything that we just said for the yellow oscillator also works independently for the green one, including the deviation control. As we could expect, if we choose to use the green oscillator as a carrier, the yellow oscillator can be our modulator, thanks to the internal semi-normalization. Furthermore, since each oscillator can be a carrier and a modulator, we can use the two FM circuits together to engage a cross-modulation. The yellow modulates the green, that in turn modulates the yellow. However, we must be cautious with this technique since it can get quickly out of hand and lead us to the noise reel, which actually isn't too bad per se. Classic complex oscillator usually feature a global frequency modulation bus that sets the frequency modulation amount over both oscillators at the same time. The brain saw departs from this concept and features two independent deviation controls, making the two oscillators completely independent. This allows more freedom when playing with an external CV to automate the deviation amount. For example, we can have an envelope controlling the deviation amount on every note played by the yellow oscillator and another envelope providing some atonal accents over the green one, each with different modulation amounts. Having two separate deviation controls also allows you to use the Brainso as two independent through zero frequency modulation oscillators with external modulators. The green oscillator has three additional features. The first one is that we can scale its frequency through this button and use it as an LFO. We won't be able to hear it, but we can use it as a CV source. The second feature is that we can control its pitch through the same signal that we patch to the yellow volt per octave input through this circuit over here. It is an integrator which introduces some time lag between the two oscillators. When the knob is fully counterclockwise, the circuit is off and the green oscillators won't receive any CV from the yellow one. 
If we engage this integrator, we hear that the pitch change will happen very slowly, while the yellow oscillator changes immediately. As we rotate the knob, the time lag will get progressively shorter until we reach the rightmost position, where it is almost immediate. We said almost because the integrator is always active, so if you want both oscillators to respond to the exact same CB, we suggest duplicating the signal with a buffered multiple, such as the 333, and patch it to both CB inputs by passing the integrator. We can also voltage control the integrator. In this example, we use a CV coming from the Usta sequencer. At every node, the glide time will be different. This control becomes especially useful to add some spice to our patch when we are modulating the two oscillators. Finally, the green oscillator gives us two more ways to control its frequency. The synchronization options. The lock sync works excellent when we need to get rid of unwanted beats when using two oscillators in unison. It makes the green oscillator follow the yellow one by slightly changing the upper and lower thresholds of its core at every yellow waveform cycle. However, as soon as we engage any kind of frequency modulation or we detune the two oscillators too much, the circuit loses its tracking capabilities and may produce results that aren't particularly exciting. The flip sync, on the other hand, is a more aggressive synchronization option. Whenever a yellow oscillator's wave cycle ends, it forces the green oscillator's waveform to the rising stage. If it is already rising, it will just keep rising. If it is falling, it will flip its direction, hence its name. It is the typical synchronization option for triangle core oscillators. Compared to the classic hard sync of sawtooth core oscillator, it has a more mellow tone fatter bass and provides smoother sync sweeps. This technique is excellent when preserving the original green oscillator's timber is not a priority, but we require a different and more creative result. The yellow oscillator has a sync input as well that allows us to sync it to any external source. We can choose between lock sync and flip sync through a jumper on the PCB. 